This video is going to be a simplification of echolocation. I realized that the sperm whale video um, was, although good in visual aids, was not necessarily clear on the steps. So we're going to see echolocation in the ocean with your toothed cetaceans. Remember, a cetacean is going to be a whale, dolphin, or porpoise. So it could be the sperm whale, which would be a whale, or it could be the orca, which is a dolphin. Um, they're all going to do echolocation in the ocean to find their prey or to avoid obstacles, etc. So I'm going to sketch a whale skull over here with melon and a brain in it and a target over here. So I can make it pretty big because there's really not much to write. I'm going to make a blow hole like that, exaggerated. A skull, forehead, protruding out to snout with an upper and a lower jaw coming in like that okay so this is going to be the inside of the school so i'm not going to draw an eyeball all right uh, what gives the forehead the shape like with belugas is going to be the fat based melon i'm going to sketch my melon in here it's like that squishy melon that they were playing with that with the beluga or that i think it was that TikTok video all right, and then they're going to have important features for echolocation, which are just going to be the lower jaw. I'm having a hard time writing. And then here we have the blowhole. It's going to be an important feature. Collecting the signal is going to be kind of obvious, but the brain. Um, these tooth cetaceans have very enlarged auditory processing, which means their hearing and their ear region of their brain for control is extremely large proportionately to ours. This is going to be the brain. And then they're going to have a little ear hole. Like that. It's going to be their ear. Remember, there's not going to be an ear flap because that would reduce their streamlining and increase their drag in the water. We do not want that. All right, um, one last thing. I wanted to show you guys this picture before we get into the steps. The blowhole is going to have something called phonic lips. Sometimes they're called monkey lips. I know that's weird, but it's just like a voice box for humans. So let's start with voice box for humans. Okay, this is kind of gross, sorry. But here's a, like, someone sticks a camera down your mouth. This is what your larynx would look like. You have those two vocal cords. This is your voice box. And sound rushes past those vocal cords, and that's how we create different pitches and timbres for our voices. Okay, so this is human-based, and we are mammals just like dolphins. So they're going to have these monkey lips or these phonic lips that are going to cause uh, vibrations to create these clicks. Okay, this is a complicated picture, but just get oriented with it. There's the melon. There's your upper and lower jaw, your brain. So right there, that's their little voice box, their phonic lips, and that's going to help create that clicking noise. All right, so back to the steps. Okay, let's see. First step is air is converted to a clicking noise, okay? I'm gonna add to that. I'm gonna try to sketch this on here. These are gonna be my phonic lips right there. By the phonic AKA monkey lips. That's going to create the click. Okay. So what's going to focus the click out into the water is going to be the fat based melon. So let's go ahead and sketch just as kind of obvious, um, a fish. Let's just make it a fish. Don't need to worry about that now. Every color on the planet can be found on the body of a fish. So if you're in color, it doesn't matter which one you use because you are right on the color no matter what one you pick. All right, that's a fish. That's going to be its prey. But it's going to be more than just telling that there's food there. There are several things that this click will transmit to the tooth cetacean. It's going to give it a feel for the distance based on how long it takes to come back. It's going to give it info about the texture. 
Um, it could be like, oh my gosh, you're about to run into a rocky continental slope, or it could be um, a fluffy octopus. Um, the size, what's the shape of this? And what is the speed that what I'm going after or about to run into or where I'm headed, how fast is it going? Okay, so a lot of information can be received just by this clicking sound. All right, I'm gonna do my click, I believe in orange, I'll use orange highlighter. So the click goes out, ricochets off of the target and returns to the cetacean antenna, which is the lower jaw. This lower jaw is similar to the melon in the fact that they are both fat-based. So this is gonna be your antenna and it's gonna direct this signal to the inner ear. All right, so we have some steps going. Um, let's see, this is gonna be step one. Step two, the melon focuses the click. and sends out to water. Feel free to pause. So the click hits the target. This is up three. You have click hits target. Step four, click returns. to cetacean. What's interesting is, is that the antenna of the cetacean is its fat-filled lower jaw. So this is gonna be step five. I'll just put lower jaw right there. It's going to receive the sound signal. Receives the sound signal and it's uh, fat-filled, but we don't need to know that detail, okay? So we have to the target, to the lower jaw, to the ear, and then to the brain for the processing, okay? So it goes to the lower jaw, which transmits it to the ear. So this is step six, and the ear transmits the signal to the brain for processing. And this is happening click by click, and they're processing this information super fast because they have that enlarged auditory, and auditory means hearing, region of their brain.